So I hope everybody's here. Uh, first of all, I want to greet you that you're here, and I want to thank to, to say thank you to the organizers, to Mikhail, for inviting me here today. So I will do the presentation in English. I understood that there are people who does not understand Bulgarian. So uh, let's start. My name is Emil. I'm an engineer. And today we will talk about hardware ch challenges. I will tell you about uh, our company and who am I a bit later because you are here now because of you, not because of me or my company. So let's start. Uh, to do my best, I want to ask you a few questions. Are there any software developers? Raise your hand. Are there any firmware developers? Okay. Are there any hardware developers? <laughs> okay. Hardware engineers. Uh, is there some, someone who knows Kirchhoff slopes? Uh, by the way, who believes Kirchhoff is a Russian? Okay, he's German. I'm testing you. So, uh, is anybody at the moment planning to start? Uh, IoT business or already started such business. So, uh, are any entrepreneurs here? Okay, one. So, uh, what is Internet of Things? Uh, it was supposed to give us benefits or expectations. I'm not quite sure. Uh, my first impression about uh, how uh, Internet of Things uh, was that it's a hype. It's a pure hype. I want to show you the main benefits that everybody suggests how the uh, Internet of Things will give us. This is to save resources, to increase the productivity, to save valuable time. And we save time to, in order to invest in more valuable things, like playing guitar and drinking beer, for example. So uh, imagine. I, 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 well, I, I see a really good future when my refrigerator is doing groceries and it's automatically filled with my favorite brand of beer and a fresh meat for barbecue. But improving humans' life is a very complicated problem. As Mencken said, for every complex problem there is a simple solution that uh, there is solution that is clear, simple, and usually wrong. Maybe Internet of Things is such a wrong solution. Why? Because we have all these challenges. Let's get back on the, on the example with, uh, with the refrigerator. So this refrigerator is connected, right? And my watch is also connected and smart. It measures my heartbeat, my pulse, and my blood pressure and talks to the refrigerator. And the refrigerator starts changing its habits, its shopping habits. In a one week, instead of beer and meat, I will find vegetables and fruits. And this is my greatest fear, the personal freedom. I don't have choice. The same refrigerator will inform my physician that I'm unhealthy. So he will schedule two more trainings in my fitness and also call my insurance company. And I'm healthy and miserable in the end. But I'm most afraid of the technical challenges. Well, I left here to play a simple game, but there are no, this game works where there are many people. So we'll skip it. And let's talk about the predictions. Let's see the numbers. There are already 10 billion devices connected, more than 10 billion. This is more than three or four times the connected people on the internet right now. It is believed that in 10 years, there will be between 50 and 100 billion of connected devices. And the economical impact will be 11.1 trillion dollars. This is 10% of the world 
gross product. So what does it mean? I want to show you something. I have a plate table tennis. So 50, million, 50 billion balls like this one, if spilled, they will cover Sofia, the whole surface. And 11.1 trillion dollars in 100 nodes, when piled, they will be high about, the height will be about 18,000 kilometers or double the height of the Mount Everest. So that is what is expected. What we have to do? Well, we have to decide, first of all, we have to solve all these social issues. The greatest concern is privacy and security. Uh, I think this problem is more uh, psychological than, than technical. I think that most of, the, of these cases are already solved. So we have enough security, but we do need to decide the level of intelligence. Should these devices be human smart or robot, robot smart? For example, if my refrigerator is human smart, I can marry him later. Well, but if, if he decides to lock and I will, if I die from hunger, who will sue it? Can you imagine IoT police? The next thing we need is unlimited network connectivity. And the problem that I see is the greatest is the noise and interference. <coughs> Sorry. So all these devices become part of the network. And by noise, I mean electrical and data noise. There are already 4,000 exabytes of data on the internet right now. If it is printed on books, <laughs> the pile will be 80 times the distance to Pluto and backwards, which is 7.5 billion kilometers. We have to provide electrical power. We have, we need chargers, and chargers are very, very noisy devices. And all these devices become part of the network. So if, if the devices are 50 billion, it's about a 6,000 6, per, per living human. So can you imagine to charge or to replace the battery of 6,000 devices? I can. Let's go deeper. Have you been on a concert like this? Have you tried to make a call to understand what really noise is? Maybe you can make the call, you can shout, and, well, if it is short call, you can make it. But if you decide to take a selfie and upload it on Facebook, you may have troubles. So each of these devices, imagine that each of these devices is a drop of water. We can use some umbrella to keep us away from the rain. But no matter how many umbrellas we, cannot, we have, we cannot avoid a tsunami. And the most interesting question is how much it's going to cost. We do the math. Assume that the internet connection in 2025 will cost 10 cents. This makes 5 billion per month. Who will pay it? Who controls it? What about the electricity? Here the problem is more complex. The average, the, the most popular cheap ESP for Wi-Fi connection, its average consumption is 80 milliamps. So if we supply it with 3 volts, it makes about 400, uh, 240 milliwatts, which is okay, but if all 50 billion devices are to transmit at the same time, we will have 12,000 megawatts. And this is six times the capacity of Kozodui nuclear power plant. And it will cost about 1.5 billion dollars per hour. So obviously, we cannot solve 
this, all these problems with the current state of mind. And, well, maybe the right solution is to prevent the tsunami or to invent a new paradigm. Amir talked about protocols, and all of them have some issues. But who am I and what pisses me off? The phrase that there are no companies in Bulgaria that develop Internet of Things. This, I heard this last week three times. And there was a post on Facebook that some company in Sofia, I read only the title, we will make the Sofia the, the smartest city in the world. Well, I know, know a company that is doing that for about eight years. Who we are? Our company is called Zek Engineering, for short, Zek Eng. We are a hardware design studio which is established at about 2007 by two passionate engineers as a freelancing company. In these nine active years, those guys finished more than 150 projects. I joined six years ago, and for the last two years, I'm full-time. By full-time, I mean 24-7. And I'm, re well, I'm responsible for many things, but mainly for customer relations, business development, and internal projects. What Zek Eng has achieved over the time? So they created a product. Do you know this guy? Ronaldo, what, what, what is interesting about this picture is the belt he is wearing. This device is created by the company Sensorize. Actually, this company hired one Italian company and us to create this device. And you may not believe, but it was hard to find it in the office these days. I brought, I brought it to show you. This, is, this device evolved in a fitness device. Actually, this device was designed for measuring the jump, the quality of the jump. And now it's redesigned as a full fitness solution. And it was started in 2011, five years ago. There was no ESP. And most interesting, there were no accelerometers and gyroscopes, two, three axes. They were all two axes. So to implement this thing, they put two sensors perpendicularly to measure the axis, and each sensor costed $30, not three like now. The next product is Kipi, Pathfinder. It started in 2013 when their competitors whistle. Uh, and I may tell you that all this you can see is manufactured in Bulgaria. Another fitness gadget, this is a, a sport smart wear. It's a sensor embedded in a in a cloth. There, there are different kinds of clothes. It measures your Pulse, EKG, and so on and so on. What else we can add in our portfolio are many devices. Some of them I cannot show you right now. I can show you two more. This is a board from the belt, and this is motor motor. Well, we, we did power grid quality monitoring devices, IoT connected, motorcycles and cars, GPS trackers, anti theft systems, home and office automation, and many more. So, we believe that we have enough experience to show you the ultimate IoT design algorithm, according to us. Let me first tell you what is an IoT system. It's some kind of connectivity usually to internet, a microcontroller, several sensors, one, one or many sensors, several actuators, and a user interface. And the user interface is mainly used for control and settings. It's not used to produce data. That's what differentiates 
the IoT systems from Internet of People. So I will show you this secret algorithm. It's from 10 points. Usually everything's from 10 points. You know all these articles, 10, 10 better ways to make sex and so on and so on. So I will go fast point by point and later I will show you an example of, well, a, a mixture of several devices. So the first point is split into data and actions. So what, how we generate data? You, we use sensors like these ones for temperature, humidity, pressure, weight, gas, and so on and so on. And we are interested in several parameters. First is the precision. How precise sensors do we need? Then the data rate. How often we can read the sensor? Interface and protocol. I mean the interface and protocol for communication in the microcontroller. Power consumption, if we tend to, to make low power devices. And price. I will tell you, for, for the companies, it's opposite. Price is the first criteria. Actuators are similar. They can be relays, uh, valves, PWMs, and step, stepper motors, and I, I cannot imagine what, what they also can be. We have, is, we have also the same parameters, but instead of uh, data rate, we have speed, how fast we apply the action. User interface. We have several ways to, to communicate with the user. Display, touch screens, buttons, potentiometers, LEDs, and so on. They also have some parameters. So, uh, about the security. Well, I'm not an expert in security, but for, we, we are interested in security from hardware viewpoint. What will be the level of security? We are interested in this requirement because we have to know whether we use the standard solutions with the microcontroller, so we have to add some additional chip or more uh, computa computation power. Maybe we have to use uh, four core microcontroller, I don't know. It depends on the calculations rate. Data representation, what do I mean here? Uh, whether there will be any special conversions. For example, uh, if, if, you, if you want to make a power meter, you have to measure the voltage and the current. And for voltage and current measuring, measurements, usually uh, some transformers are used who tend to make phase shifts, which are artificial. And in order to compensate these phase shifts, you may need a DSP, or you can send the raw data and do it on the back end. We have to know that. What accuracy is needed? I mentioned, do we send, do we need raw or processed process data? And sometimes we need compression. Sometimes we need to do the compression on the device. I have nothing to show you anymore. Internet connection protocols. Amir had covered them. These are the most famous. Application logic. Here is the tricky part. Usually, the perfect IoT solution is when we have devices with almost no logic so we can implement all the, all the logic on server side. But usually we are not connected always on internet. And there should be a decision how much of the application logic or business logic be implemented on the devices themselves. There are some applications that you cannot avoid logic on devices. And the level of intelligence. I told you, should it be human smart, Computer smart, robot smart, other smart. Power supply. Here is the, the toughest thing I see in many companies. They, they buy a lot of hardware stuff. They buy relation kits. 
and cannot connect them because they cannot provide the needed voltage and currents usually. Should it be battery supplied, chargeable or not chargeable, or we should supply it from, from AC adapter? Or using energy harvesting solution? Energy harvesting is widely used in agriculture because you almost have no grid, electrical grid there. Microcontroller. When we come to decision to a microcontroller, we should know whether we need some, to perform some sophisticated algorithms. Do we need a DSP core inside? Do we need a separate DSP chip? Uh, do we need a simple microcontroller, right? Like some 8 bit at melt just to, to read one temperature and say, send it over the, the internet? Uh, do, how much memory do we need? It means uh, RAM, operating memory, and flash memory for the code. Do we need non volatile memory, additional EEPROM memory? Do we need real time clock? And I will tell you, most of the chips have built in real time clock, but sometimes more accurate is required. And low power modes. So we, we, we may use several solutions called system on a chip and system on a module. Maybe I had to take system on a chip and system on a module. System on a chip is a, usually the microcontroller with the connectivity part built in one, in one package. And system on a module usually is made for more powerful microprocessors which have two, which have two or four cores and usually have DDR3 memory. So this is, uh, they are built on module like, uh, like uh, RAM, RAM boards for, for the laptops because the, the connection between uh, the controller and the memory are high speed and very hard to make. I mean, it's very hard to make the design. And development tools. What development tools do we need? Stylescopes, evaluation kits. Do we, have, do we need the debugger called JTAG or some additional interfaces? And uh, what usually is a drawback here is the price license of the compiler and some processor have license for the SDK, some not, and so on. Server environments and some other stuff. Do we need additional services like schematic design, PCB design, 3D design, software, firmware, or whatever. And now I have to check do we have time so I can run fast to the example. Have you seen this? Thing here. It's very popular thermostat, Nest. And I try to make an example that is similar to Nest, but incorporates several more options. So I called it temperature for controlling temp uh, system for controlling temperature and humidity. So let's see the requirements. We need two types of devices. First device is a thermostat. This implements the green boxes, sensors for temperature, humidity, humidity, smoke detector, uh, this is an additional feature, and movement sensor, infrared sensor. So it will communicate over Wi-Fi. It will also implement additional uh, features like alarm and LED indicator. And the temperature and heat will be adjusted with potentiometers. We will not have a display, just as simple as possible. And we need one actuator, which will have a relay, an infrared emitter. This is when, if, if the device that should be controlled is, uh, is air conditioner, that's normally controlled with, with remote control. Yes. Microcontroller, and the same alarm, the LED indicator. Why alarm? Because the system can, uh, can force all the devices to, to, to play the alarm in order to, in case of emergency. When smoke is detected or movement is detected when it, it's not, uh, it's when it's created by some intruder. 
and we will run it to the 10 point algorithm. So the data is clear. Do we have a, something to write on the board? No, actually. So we have the temperature sensor. How, no, how much accuracy we need for a temperature? 0 0.1 degrees enough? Yeah, maybe. You know, the, the usually the air conditioners you can create with step 1 degree, not 0 0.1, but for any case, we can have 0 0.1. Humidity sensor. Normally, the re relation, uh, relation to humidity is in percent, it's from 0 to 100%, one 8 bit value is enough. Motion sensor, it's one flag, there is motion, there is no motion. Smoke detector, there is smoke, there is no smoke, one flag again. And the actuator, we have a relay on or off, and infrared, which is some serial communication. Or usually you can do it with digital lab. It depends on the implementation. For data packet, I chose to send binary packets. Uh, the numbers will be represented with fixed point. So, for example, uh, 24.5 degrees will be transmitted like 245. Uh, the first field is unique ID. I will tell you later why I need it. The second is timestamp when we send the message. The third is temperature value. The next is humidity, motion flag, alarm flag, and simple checksum. Well, it may happen to be redundant because we are already using TCP. And the TCP guarantees that we, we transmit the data properly. Or we hope so. And we will use the embedded security options that are provided by the chip of our choice. So the, what will be the topology of the connection? The thermostat is one device. Well, for example, for a single room. The next is actuator for humidity that will switch on and off our uh, air dryer. The actuator for heater, because we can have different heater and cooler. And one local plan that can be our mobile phone or PC. All they connect to a Wi-Fi gateway, which is our Wi-Fi router. And it connects to the internet. And the cloud service is connected to the same internet. So we can use remote client. We can switch on and off all this stuff from, from remote distance. I want to show you the virtual connections that we create. So from, uh, from device point of view and from user point of view, all the devices are connected independently to the cloud service. And the remote client has virtual connection to all the devices through the cloud service. Everything is perfect. I should not show you this arrow over there. Everything is perfect until we have internet. If we lose the internet connection, or if the server is down, we, we cannot uh, leave in a cold or overheated environment. So some of these devices should become clever, or all of them. And they have to implement some kind of intercommunication. Well, what, what I've seen in this situation, normally all companies want to avoid the extra gateway because of the cost. What I've seen in this situation, all the devices constantly ping the server. And if they lost, load the ping, they start communicating to the thermostat. It becomes the most clever device in the network. And they create this hidden connection through our local gateway. And this is the question, how much of the application logic we are going to implement in the remote devices?
actually by inter the interconnection this I showed you this, this, this is a great issue and uh, there was a report by McKinsey Institute that says that 40% of these 11 trillion dollars will depend of this interconnection solution so uh, I want to show you some example for power supply usually here is where most companies fail. So we chose our thermostat to be powered by a battery. Why? Because I can move it anywhere, put it anywhere in the room. I'm not dependent on any cord. I can put it in my, in my, on, my, on my belt and ensure that where I'm sitting right now is the proper temperature. And for that we, we need a rechargeable battery or casual 2 A's or 3 A's batteries. And usually, this power supply is between 2.4 and 4.2 volts. What is the tricky part? The tricky part is that, is that not all devices are supplied at the same voltage. And we have to implement some uh, step up converters or step down converters in order to increase the voltage or decrease it. All these converters uh, have losses about 15 or 20 percent. So we, we, we squeeze our expensive energy from the batteries only to provide all these voltages. Well, this uh, loss can be reduced just with proper design and proper choice of sensors and microcontrollers. So there is no, how I say, there is no generic solution. Well, for our example device, we chose uh, a microcontroller for Texas Instruments. Actually, it's system on a chip. It implements Wi-Fi module and a Cortex M4 core. And the interesting thing is that they are separate cores. So one core is managing the Wi-Fi internally, and the second core is running our application. And what is nice here is that we can stop completely the Wi-Fi core and run only the, applica the application core. So we reduce the consumption for the Wi-Fi that we not need right now and just, for example, read the sensors, and etc., etc., because we don't need to transmit every millisecond the change of temperature. And what is what is clever here? We can also we can also take from TI uh, a sensor that is temperature and humidity at the same time. And this sensor is a clever one. It implements thresholds inside. So we can set the thresholds and go in sleep with the microcontroller. And we, when we are in hibernate mode, we consume only 4 micrograms. And the sensor is doing all, our, all the job of controlling the temperature. So if the temperature hits one of the, of the ranges, it generates the interrupt that wake up, wakes up our microcontroller. So we can save a lot of energy this way. We will use the hardware crypto engine inside. The hardware also provides CRC and checksum, which is more than enough for our, our purposes. All the IP stack is implemented and TCP UDP protocols are implemented inside. What is the price of this chip? Well, it depends how, how many you buy. But on AliExpress, you can find a module. Why module? Because on the module, all the uh, high frequency part is realized, you have certification of this module, so you can use it directly, and uh, the price is about $10. $10. For bulk, I think it will drop to seven or eight. I'm not sure. You have to, you have to quote. But uh, buying the microcontroller from Texas Instruments, if you, if you do not buy uh, 10,000 pieces, is more expensive than buying the module from AliExpress. So you can, you can buy the module. And 
the, the, the tools we need, it's the called, again from TI, of course, called the simple link launchpad, which is at this board. The SDK, which is free, uh, if you use this JTAG, this is the, the most, the cheapest JTAG. If you use it, it's completely free. And TI provides real time operating system and a lot of examples. So I have to make a disclaimer here. We are not affiliate of TI. Just uh, telling you more about TI because we have great, they have great partners here in Bulgaria. So we can, we can work easily with them. And they usually provide samples for free. And they have one, um, TI have one uh, division there that if you decide to make some projects, you can send your requirements and then they can make uh, the project you need. They can, they can uh, tell you what kind of stuff from their stuff you can use to implement your solution. So I believe you can do it alone or with our, with our help or with somebody's help, you can do it. But the question here is, should you? And actually it's a bit philosophical question because, uh, how I say, we, we tried to avoid very long time this trend. First of all, I, I told that Internet of Things is a pure hype and it will not grow as much as expected. But from um, what I see in the last two years is that our projects, 90% maybe, or 80% or 90% are Internet of Things. And there is one thought by, by the American author from Washington descent on Ayn Rand, that you can avoid the reality, but you cannot avoid the consequences avoiding, of avoiding it. So we understand that we can avoid uh, not looking so deep on the Internet of Things, but we cannot avoid the consequences. And sooner or later, we will be out of business. So uh, before I say thank you. These are my contacts. So if you like, you can contact me. If you don't like me, you can also send, I don't like you. And there is a special, I would say not an offer because I'm not selling anything right now. Usually then this is the part of the presentation that somebody sells something. But I decided to make a guide. So you can use this address to register, uh, the only name and email is required. We are not going to spam you, we have a lot of things to do. Just when it is ready, I will send it uh, to you for free. And this is a limited. Uh, there is one bonus. So from all, all the, the registration, we will pick three that will make free consultation and do our best to help you guys. And I will tell you there is a limited time. So in the morning there were 13 hours. Uh, it expires at 12 o'clock this evening because we have to know how many applications, how many I say, consultations we have to make. Do we have any and to plan them? So thank you.